In this video, I'm going to be chatting with Claire Baker, who is an author, a speaker, and a period coach. She helps people to experience the menstrual cycle as the empowering gift that it can be, and she is genuinely such a personal inspiration to me. I'm currently doing her period coach teacher training at the moment and I'm loving learning from her and I know you guys will too. So in this video we're chatting about menstrual shame, we're also chatting about um, diving deeper with your menstrual practice and using your menstrual cycle as a tool to sort of hone your menstrual self-authority and to uh, to use it to help you to set boundaries and optimize your creativity and to get into a state of flow with your well-being and your self-care. So we'll also be chatting about Claire's new book which just came out called 50 Things You Need to Know About Periods and the mini course that she made which accompanies the book when you pre-order before the 8th of September. And I've actually jumped in on that to create a beautiful video on how to meal prep for your best period ever as well as an ebook. So you get all of that when you pre-order and you'll hear more information about that at the end. So if you're new here, I'm Lucia and welcome to Ambrosia's Table. I make videos that help you to eat a nutrient dense, whole food diet that nourishes your gut and to do it with consistency and use your cycle as a tool to find your kitchen flow. Oh, thanks for having a chat with me, Claire. Oh, thank you for asking me to have a chat with you, Lucia. I'm so happy to be here, as always. Yeah. <laughs> I know you must be so busy with your book at the moment and everything going on. When actually, when is it being released in the UK? Next Thursday. So the Thursday, Thursday the 9th of July is the UK release date. So it's six sleeps from when we're recording this today. But Australia had a bit of a um, surprise release. So Australia's had the book now for about six weeks, which is really amusing to me. So it's been really exciting to already see it out in the world and people sharing it and enjoying it and getting feedback on it. But yet technically uh, the official release date is, isn't actually for you know, until July. I got the privilege of having a peek of it because we've been doing that little collaboration. So I was looking at the back and I, I love what you wrote about said we are taught not to discuss periods in public society doesn't celebrate the menstrual cycle even saying the word period is a bit taboo and I was like oh it's so true like and I feel mm. like even ever since my first period I remember just like even like my family's progressive I don't know where I got that from and even now mm. like as somebody who's like falling in love with living in a cyclic way I still mm find myself sometimes telling a little white lie or like oh I can't make it because I'm busy or whatever it is. So yeah I wondered if you wanted to just like speak to menstrual shame and just that element mm -hmm. of the book. I hear that a lot from people and I, I would say that my experience was similar in that my family is really open about periods and bodies and you know it was a naked house like my mum's a nurse you know so I knew any one like I was the kid <laughs> in new one who could raise her hand to like identify the difference between a vagina and the vulva like I just knew everything about everything at such a young age and even still I had so much shame around my period when it first started that I don't even remember even having it and I know that I didn't tell anyone I didn't tell my mom I didn't tell any of my friends I kept it really private I decided I was going to manage it by myself like I didn't want any help and I was really secretive about it and why like where did that come from and so even though you know even within now yes our family dynamic definitely influences how we feel about periods of course things that we hear from our parents our siblings then we also need to think about friends in school how do we learn about periods i remember in year five we were doing sex ed and i remember all the boys being sent out to play sport while all of you know the girls sat in to learn about about periods which it doesn't even really make any sense like why are we the only like we were kind of like hushed away like it was this secret thing you know at 10 years old or being sort of like ushered over here and don't let the boys hear what you're talking about and that stayed with me until like oh gosh like probably 10 years ago even still I remember the first blog post actually that I wrote about coming off hormonal contraception and losing my period for a year I wrote the you can, you can go and find it I wrote the very beginning paragraph I wrote um all right this one's for all of the ladies like boys 
if you don't want to hear about periods, like now's the time to look away. And I was 26 when I wrote that. And it's, just, but it felt so normal. That didn't feel to me like menstrual shame or stigma or taboo. It didn't feel like menstrual shame or stigma or taboo being, you know, ushered to the corner when I was 10 years old to learn about periods or not wanting to tell anybody about it when my period started or using words like little white mouse to describe tampons and, you know, in, in high school and, um, and so it's quite like, it's quite insidious, this shame. And it's, it's quite difficult to like, to name it and to name exactly where it came from. Of course, we could look back to cultural backgrounds. We can look to many religious traditions and beliefs. And um, we could talk about the patriarchy. We could talk about capitalism. We can talk about all sorts of things that have created this idea that having a menstrual cycle is a burden, that periods are gross, dirty, shameful, that there's something that is secretive that we don't talk about, and that they ultimately contribute to to females being like the weaker sex, I suppose. You know, this is the this is the the rhetoric that we hear, you know, even in like women's magazines. I think things are changing now, but it would always be like, oh God, that time of the month, like that yeah. time when you can't do the things you want to do, that time when you're premenstrual and you turn into a demon, like that time of the month when you're just a bitch, like you when you're hormonal. It, it's this like language and um, yeah, this narrative that we've been telling for a really long time. And so it's, it is difficult to pinpoint it, but you know, we need to look at our systems. I mean, I could just go on, like we need to look at our systems. We need to look at the fact that there's no free period products available in schools you know you can get like lip gloss and a condom from like a, a, a vending machine in toilets but can you get um, period products available everywhere the answer is no you know we don't really address menstrual policies in workplaces there's still like a lot of systemic change that needs to happen but I really do believe that as individuals there's so much that we can do to just start to have these conversations to start to use the correct language to start to just normalize what 50% of the planet will experience at some point in their life so that we can have conversations like you and I are having today and just speak really openly about something that is miraculous. I mean, it's literally the, you know, we've birthed humanity through the menstrual cycle, but it's also just so normal. And, and that's, you know, that's really my hope and vision is that it does just become something that is, yes, revered, but also just normalised so that we can just get on with it <laughs> and have periods and not feel like we have to hide them away. Yeah, so true, hey. I feel like that part that you said about it sort of making us like the weaker sex, I think that's, for me anyway, that feels like where my shame comes from when, you know, when you tell the, find yourself saying those white lies is because, especially potentially in like a professional scenario or like, you know, you don't want to admit your weakness. So it's like mm. putting that on its head and I feel like that's kind of what your book is doing in a way because I think on the back as well you said something about, you know, turning the curse uh, into your superpower. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's... Mm -hmm. I've got it here actually, shall I? Oh, yes! What I prepared on. earlier. <laughs> oh, how fun! Yeah, so I really wanted there to be blood on the front cover. It was really important to me that there was like blood and bloodstained knickers, underwear on the front cover. Because yeah, it really gives really that, that, that like um, juxtaposition between like the cute little lacy knickers and then it's like, hey, this is totally normal, even though this is probably making you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, and like who hasn't had that experience? I mean, everybody who has had a period has had that experience of staining a pair of underwear. Yeah. And that's the kind of like imagery and language that I, I just wish was more normal so that it wasn't really shocking to see that. And um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I think it's changing. Definitely. It's changing. So what do you think, like, what would the ideal, like in the perfect world, what would you love people to, how would you like them to experience periods? Oh man, I mean the first thought that comes to my mind is that, that they could be pain free. Yeah. Um, right. Pain free, that they could be safe. You know, so many women and people with periods all over the world don't get to experience menstruation safely and hygienically and in a way where they have the education that they need to be able to manage their period and they, you know, they're held in a safe space. Um, that they aren't demonized, that they aren't shunned from their communities. You know, there's like, you know, on, on the spectrum of, of period shame, I mean, there's also, you know, communities where women's lives are literally at risk every time they bleed because there's so, so much stigma and misunderstanding about periods. I would also, you know, really love women to be able to, to rest and for those of us who bleed, to just be able to 
take some time to listen to our bodies when we're bleeding and if we want to just pause and rest and recharge and connect with ourselves at that time in whatever way best suits us you know in whatever way we really want to like that is my my absolute vision is that periods or something that we're not taking we're not taking time off life because we need to because we're unable to function we're just taking a moment to rest and recharge because we're sickly beings and you know we all are we have a menstrual cycle or not we all sleep every night i would love menstruation to be to be recognized in the same way that we recognize sleep as essential for our vitality and for our well-being and our spiritual connection to self and our creativity you know and our, our sanity like our mental health i would love menstruation to be to be considered in the same way that we consider sleep yeah totally that oh, that analogy just makes so much sense because it is kind of more of that feminine more of that resting and i think that with the science that is emerging on that topic and then hopefully more and more on the menstrual topic like mm -hmm. that kind of backs it up and that kind of makes it more of a priority and brings it more into the conversation that's happening mm -hmm. i think that sleep is a good way for, for people to understand what what I'm talking about. It's also why I like using the seasons because we can talk about winter being the time of year. I know like you're in winter right now in Tassie where mm -hmm. nature has, you know, has pause. There is stillness. Like there is, there is a sense of like of death and of, of stopping and, and resting. And we know that spring will come and we know that the, you know, the blossoms will come out soon and the buds will begin to bloom. And um, we trust that. I would love to see that same trust mm -hmm. that, we can stop at menstruation and it's okay to have that pause and rest and stillness and recharge trusting that you know the momentum and the energy will return um, just trusting in that process but sleep is a really great way to explain it to people as well particularly those who don't have period because we all have the 24 hour circadian rhythm so mm -hmm. explaining you know the need to sleep like you know you could get by without a night's sleep sure you know you could probably even do a couple of, of nights of of bad sleep but it's going to catch up with you ultimately isn't it and it's the same thing with menstruation if we just continue to charge through our entire menstrual cycles with the same energy you know, and the same approach every single day we can do it for a while even maybe years or decades but ultimately it is going to start to catch up with us whether that's through burnout or hormonal imbalance or period pain or just exhaustion depression anxiety like there, there's some really serious manifestations that occur when we aren't listening to our bodies and we continue to just plow through. And hey, no judgment because like we've said, you know, we don't live in a world that recognizes this rhythm, this monthly rhythm. Yeah, it's not set up for us yet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> totally. I, um, I, I heard about the concept of like celebrating menarche, so your first period. I've heard about that from you, also probably from Red School and stuff like that. And I would love you to sort of touch on that, like essentially how would you celebrate it if you are having your first period? And then like say someone like me or probably like you as well who didn't have the chance to celebrate it at the time. How could we incorporate that and how and why would, what would the benefits be? Yeah, menarche is a really powerful time in a young person's life when they begin to bleed. And as I said, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I certainly didn't celebrate mine at all. I think the opportunity might have been there if I had have actually invited my mum to, to participate in my first period, I'm sure she would have loved nothing more than to like throw me a party or something, which I think is probably the reason why I did it. <laughs> So imagining like period parties, like red uh -huh. balloons and undies totally. everywhere. <laughs> Totally. Honestly, like she would have loved it. And so I think it's really important to like consider the, the person that we're talking about, you know, who, who are they and what kind of, what kind of things are they into? What would they like? Would they like to be celebrated with family and friends? Um, and for some, you know, young women, they would absolutely love that. Like love the idea of celebrating with their girlfriends or celebrating with family. For others, you know, myself included, I would maybe a much more like private, um, I would have loved like a book, like a really like beautiful book that somebody could have given me at that time. Oh, a book like yours? A book! <laughs> oh my God, imagine, imagine a book that you could give to somebody. But honestly, like your book, that's the book you would want to give, right? That's yeah, that's you what I would have wanted. Yeah, so there's some really... You know, there's so many beautiful things that you can do to like ritualize that time. You could certainly like sit down, um, create some sort of you know ceremony together. Maybe you both wear red or colors that you really 
really love, get foods and drinks that you really love and enjoy. Just take a moment to honor the transition that this young girl is going through from, from not having, you know, this ebb and flow of the menstrual cycle to now like beginning this change of hormones in the body and, and starting to bleed and moving now into the next like, you know, 30, 35 or so years of, of having a menstrual cycle. Um, and just giving her information and understanding not only on how to manage her period, but also, you know, what I would really love, would have loved, is understanding the four different phases of the menstrual cycle and recognizing that, yes, there's the, you know, here's your period now and you're going to have this period for the next, you know, few decades. But you're also going to be moving through all of these other phases as well. And I think that's the missing piece of information that could have really benefited me as a very angsty, moody teenager. I would love to yeah. and Claire that, that I mean, insight. You've got one piece of the pie. It's like, what about the other four? Come on, the other totally. three. I look, oh, God, I just look back at, like, how awful I was as a teenager. And I just oh, wonder, no. like, maybe, maybe if I had have had an understanding of, you know, of the pre-menstrual week in particular, I think that there really could have been, you know, could have alleviated a lot of the tension in my household. It's gone a bit smoother, hey? Yeah, I remember, yeah. like, literally just crying to my mom because I was 10 and a half and I just remember being like I don't want to be an adult like that was all it meant to me like I didn't mm. know that there was like all of these positives or like just any that there was anything more than mm. that really so yeah it's quite young too yeah totally I think that's probably like where the shame came in it was like you hadn't hadn't seen any of my friends go through it yeah and then you kind of as they did like some of them would just talk about it completely like oh yeah I got my period blah 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 well, like somewhere even excited so it's just like so fascinating to to hear to sort of to see and figure out why people react in certain ways where they pick up those ideas and that change them. and it's helpful to have conversations like these retrospectively to go back and to heal some of you know some of maybe the tension or the shame or the confusion yeah. or the excitement you know, also to honor the excitement of that time as well because i definitely hear stories of, of women who are like oh it's great I, yeah. I loved it i was so excited to get it i was so happy to finally to start to have my period it is helpful to go back and to think about who you were at that time in your life what kinds of things were you interested in what like passions or curiosities were stirring within you at that time you know i really believe that there's a lot of power beginning just to circulate um, you know in our beings at that time it's such a powerful moment of you know this initiation this transition into these menstruating years so to get to just to go back and spend some time with you know that person like what were you interested in what were you curious about what were you you know what interest did you have and like, who were you and i think that's really lovely even if you didn't get to have that that celebratory moment of, of yeah. beginning to bleed to go back and actually like in a way like just give that to yourself um, but if there are young people in your life who are approaching menarche or have begun to bleed, then I think, you know, conversation, talking about it, you know, asking them how they might like to recognise it, giving the information, the education that they really need and keeping it simple and just speaking positively. I hear just how powerful it is to speak positively about it, to speak openly about it, to allow them space, safe space to ask questions and to not feel silly for asking questions, to be open about your own experience if you still have a menstrual cycle. That was definitely helpful for me was how open my mum was about her period and I understood what tampons and pads were and all of those things. So yeah, I think there's a lot that we can do to encourage the next generation of, of people to have, you know, who have periods to be able to have a completely different relationship with them than you know, they might have had. Yeah, totally. Mm. I think um I think one of the things that I love about this sort of like cyclic way of being is that you know you can just hear about it very briefly and you can already take away some really monumental things that can you can kind of implement it straight away and then you can kind of also as you're practicing it and living it you can go so much deeper with it so I'd love to hear kind of like how your practice has deepened over the years and kind of yeah what the what the long-term mm -hmm. benefits you found. You're right. It's so instantly rewarding, menstrual cycle <laughs> awareness. I think that's why it's so it's such a joy to teach because people get it really quickly. You know, like even for somebody maybe who's never even considered menstrual cycle awareness and has just listened to our conversation, I'm sure there are like light bulbs already going off because even if you've never paid attention to your period, you've still, you've, you know, if, you've, if somebody who menstruates, you've still had one 
for however many years now and you've still gone through these these phases or inner seasons and regardless of whether or not you have an understanding or you know been given the information when you hear it for the first time it's like oh yeah that makes so much sense that makes so much sense that some weeks i feel really buoyant and resilient and energetic and chatty and like happy and strong and then the next week i Feel like i just want to be alone and like you know and just be by myself and i'm more sensitive and a bit more emotional and what's going on you know and it, it just feels like relief it feels like permission it just feels like validation just you know to hear that oh right there's i'm not crazy there's nothing wrong with me this is just my body and it's totally normal so i agree i think it's really um it's gratifying work because people get it really quickly and it doesn't take long to then start charting either mm. so you can literally start on any day of your menstrual cycle you don't need to wait till your next period you can just start charting right away and you know as i'm sure you had the same experience with chia like patterns begin to emerge and it's really exciting because you're like ah okay i get it like on day 17 i feel this drop in energy cool got that know that it, that's going to happen accept it can work with that now brilliant it's not going to come as this like huge shock every month when my energy changes um so that's really exciting i think at the very beginning is just this like oh brilliant cool i feel like i can know myself a bit better i can work with my cycle a bit more i've i've got the tool to do that that's great that's kind of like the tip of the iceberg i suppose <laughs> yeah it's like it's like charting and cycle thinking um and you know what if you stay there brilliant that's great what I've noticed though in myself and definitely in clients and students is that over over time and it does take time you know it's not going to happen overnight is that we tend to develop this like I guess like a menstrual self-authority there is this like new confidence and new and self-understanding um, that that begins to like permeate your entire life because you understand more about who you are on each cycle day on in, in, in within each cycle phase you are then more able to set the boundaries you need to set you can learn to really channel and optimize your creativity in you know in a, in a really beautiful way you can take the best care of yourself and really optimize your well-being in a way that isn't reliant on external factors like seven day meal plans or like 30 day yoga challenges you know you're you are now the authority when it comes to your well-being and what you need on each and every day and this has this really beautiful like honing effect i suppose over over time where you really begin to shape who you are and and deepen into your to your understanding so for me it's definitely for me it's definitely been this practice over the last seven or eight years has has menstrual cycle awareness has given me the most powerful tool to understanding who better understanding who I am and being able to express that in the world and to find you know my calling and to deepen my ability to relate to other people you know my relationships are better my sexual energy you know I understand it in an entirely new way now I know how to create I know how to like I said to manage you know my health and my well-being in entirely new ways so this self-authority that emerges um, which is really powerful and I see that you know in the in the women who peers who I know in this work or, or people that I've worked with who are older than me and moving into their perimenopausal years and menopausal years postmenopausal years and beyond I can see how this practice of working with the menstrual cycle month after month after month after year after year after year shapes them into into becoming this you know I'm kind of like sitting here with my shoulders back <laughs> like into this like this this figure who has this self authority who's now being initiated into those more like wild like wise wild woman crone you know elder years and beyond so it is you know my mentor alexandra calls it a process of initiation and i when i first heard that i didn't quite understand what she meant mm -hmm. but i can see now that it is this process of initiation month after month after month to become really you no know, more of, of who of who we are this integrated you know really integrated version mm -hmm. of ourselves and it can all sound a bit conceptual i think uh, i can hear myself as i'm saying this but i think once you begin to experience that it does make sense does it resonate with you oh I'm definitely saying? yeah I, I love the idea of it being like a tool and mm -hmm. that you once you have this relatively simple tool then you get to practice using mm -hmm. it again and again and again and that's sort of where because i was asking you about how it progresses over time so you know maybe those things that are a little bit more conceptual just to hear if you're not sort of in it <laughs> living it um but yeah that that makes perfect sense 
Mm. Um, I'd love to hear some more about your your book and um, sort of who, who you made it for and what you'd love them to, to take from it. Of course. I mean, I wrote this book for anybody who has a period. I really did. I... Um, I wanted anybody, you know, in their menstruating years to be able to pick it up and to get something from it. So while I didn't write it necessarily for like teenagers, let's say, I knew that I wanted somebody who was in those early years of bleeding to be able to pick it up and get something from it. The, the people who I usually work with are, you know, in the 20s and 30s, um, you know, women who are in around about that age group. So I knew that it needed to really resonate with people who were in their like, I guess like the guts of their menstruating years. It, it isn't a book necessarily on um, fertility, but I also knew that if somebody who, who was, you know, on a fertility journey could pick it up and they could also gain something from it. Um, I wanted to write a book that felt accessible and that felt warm and playful. And there's so many books that I love that are on the menstrual cycle that I've learned a great deal from, books that I recommend that I reference that you know I really treasure and they've been an important part of my learning um, journey on menstrual cycle awareness but they sometimes they're just a bit much and they can be a bit in depth and um, and that's a, that's great if you really want to learn the intricacies of say like the endocrine system and understand how everything works but what I've learned coaching over the last seven years or so is that some people don't need to know all of that. That people don't need yeah. to become an expert on the menstrual cycle and able to, you know, in, in order to be able to actually receive the benefits that we've spoken about and start to chart. And that actually, like you said, you know, that tip of the iceberg, that like that cycle syncing and that cycle charting, you know, that, that instant realization of like, oh God, this is great. I can start, I can really start to work with this and see some benefits. Like that's really what I wanted to speak to because I trust in. I trust in that process of, of over time it developing, like I said, that menstrual authority. Definitely, I trust in that. But I wanted to, I really wanted to provide a gateway for people to be able to access this work in a way that just felt fun and warm and playful and that didn't feel overwhelming or intimidating or clinical at all. So that's, yeah, that's really why I wrote, I wrote this book and, and it's, it is for anyone who has a period I think you definitely achieved what you're setting out to to do. Thank like I've just peeked in there and I, I definitely picking up all of those things and just obviously the initial thing is lapping up all the gorgeous imagery. It's just like, oh, oh no. how fun. Yeah. It was important to me that it was illustrated and that it was really colourful and and warm. To be honest with you, my original vision for the book was completely different. I started writing this proposal <laughs> for this book four years ago and and I did. I, I envisioned then a much more like in-depth, text heavy, here's everything I've learned, here's everything I know, here's how like clever I am, like here's <laughs> all the, you know, all the case studies, all the everything. And the more I worked with the book, you know, and actually got to know the book and understand what the book really wanted and needed to be and why I, I just got my ego in check to be honest yeah. I, I realized that actually a far more simpler book was the book that really wanted to come through and a book that did feel like a joy you know something like really beautiful a book on periods it was really beautiful rather than something that needed to be like really dense um, maybe those books will come in time but, but this is the one that, that wanted to come through now yeah it kind of feels like the the wide end of the funnel like kind of like really welcoming and inclusive and like anyone can just pick it up and and take like we said the iceberg or they can even go that little bit deeper with it and then start to have that lived experience of, of the cycle mm -hmm. yeah exactly. so what kind of um what kind of things have you got in your um pre-order bonuses well, I've got yeah, I've got some really nice treats, and you are helping me with with one of them, which I'm really excited about. So, I just love I don't know, I just love creating things, and I knew that I really wanted to to create lots of extra bits for this book, so that if people did want to go deeper with it, you know, like I said, you know, this book is sort of like the tip of the iceberg. I couldn't include everything in this book. I didn't want to, but I knew that with the 
pre-orders. Um, you know, in full transparency, it's really important to get pre-orders in the, the publishing world. That's kind of yeah. how things work. And so I knew that you needed to really encourage people to pre-order it because I didn't know that before I, before I entered into the publishing. I didn't understand just how important pre-orders are. It kind of tells the bookstores that... I mean, it makes sense now to tell the bookstores that they should stock this book because people are pre-ordering it in advance. So mm-hmm. if you love an author, <laughs> side note, pre-order their books because it's really <laughs> important <laughs> to, to support them and pre-order them. Um, and so, yeah, to encourage people to pre-order it and also just to thank everybody for trusting me um, with my first book, I decided to create a bunch of pre-order bonuses. So... First of all, we have a uh, like video tutorial Q&A live chat with me that we'll do um, a little bit later, sort of midway through the year, slightly later, what am I going to say, about August or September, we'll do a Q&A once everyone's gone through the book so we can kind of get together and chat it through together because I think that'd be really important. I'm creating a mini course called um, How to Have the Best Period Ever, which is something I've wanted to do for so long. I just want to put something together that helps people be able to prepare for their period, whether it's their like regular period they have every month and they just want to get in the habit of creating a system where they they can really have like a great men- like menstrual phase or if they want to go deeper and have like their ideal menstrual phase just some like tips and a bit of a map on how to do that and you are helping me which I'm so grateful for to create um like a meal plan that goes with that that course the the how to have the best period ever course because food is just such an essential part of this work and being able to nourish our bodies when we're bleeding and just you know restore ourselves with lots of good nutrients and nourishment is really really important it's been important to me that you are you know you're the expert on on that and so I'm so (laughs) glad that you're putting um, something together for me can you tell us more about what we have on the menu I'm I'm just I'm so excited to create it for myself I just love the word moon menu like doesn't it just make you feel excited like already Yeah, I think it's like, uh, like you said, obviously, like so fundamental just for that, you know, basic thing of nourishing ourselves so that we can mm-hmm. experience less pain and all of all of those really important things, but also sort of beyond that nourishment and also so that we can relax and so that we can sort of drop deeper into that sort of more mm-hmm. spir- spiritual side of things or even just, even just the rest and even to do something for ourselves that feels like a treat and feels, feels special and it's just such a practical thing that you can do right so when you've got that Mm. recipe it's not like um an abstract sort of okay i want to celebrate my period or you know which is sort of a bit hard to to grasp Mm. so essentially it's just a video on how to meal prep for your best period so Mm. it's um yeah lots of beautiful things in there so i've made like a herbal tea blend which has got of course like rose petals and calendula and nettle and like sort of a bit witchy poo yummy things and then mm-hmm. we've got like a cardamom cacao premix so of course we've got to have some chalky involved and a matcha premix so that one's kind of like you know assuming that we've got the best case scenario where we're having that all of that rest but sometimes we are having to go to work so to have that little bit of caffeine that's also adaptogenic so we're sort of being energized but also calmed at the same time can be can be just what we need sometimes Mm. and then we've got some chocolate coated strawberries and Mm. we've got some like colorful roast veggies we've got some golden rice and some sardine fritters and then I just kind of show um, some different combinations of how I would compile the different foods so I've got like sort of like a, a brekkie, a coconut breakfast rice bowl, as well as like a sort of veggie chicken rice bowl and a broth bowl. So that's that's all the oh. treats we've got in there. <laughs> it's kind oh, of nice if people so can good. choose, like they can just make one thing or maybe even just make, you know, like a tea and then the chockies if they're if they don't have mm-hmm. that much time. So you can kind of do with it what what you like, I guess. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's like choose your own adventure with your, yeah. <laughs> with your, with your, with your period. Because every period is different, isn't it? And sometimes you do have the time and space to actually be able to really go there and prepare and drop in and rest. And like you say, sometimes 
it's not the case. And yeah. you know, the matcha is is great, and um, and just some chocolate covered strawberries. Like I love what you said about making it like a treat. Mm. It's something that you can look forward to and and feel like you're really nourishing yourself and loving on yourself through food. I'm cycle day 27 today, and so. I can like when you're talking. I can just feel <laughs> myself like one of those strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it just sounds absolutely incredible, and it does. I love I, I love using the cycle to prepare for our, our periods, and so being able to use that inner summer energy to get started on, on meal prepping where we can, and you know, mm. prepare some of those mixes, and then that autumn phase of preparing and preparation, so that. We are creating, starting to like psychologically just you know change the, those thought patterns as well about <laughs> about our period and looking forward you know beginning to even look forward to it rather than yeah. dreading its arrival. Yeah, definitely. I had um, um, a funny thought. I I was chatting to a girl on Instagram and she said that she um she'd made some of the period treats from a previous video, and her boyfriend was always um eating them. So she she decided to like label them something that he didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> like hiding them away so then when she had a period like <laughs> my special treat that's so good oh it's so naughty not yeah. for you yeah i know <laughs> but i mean you know it's irresistible I <laughs> well i'm so it. grateful oh, yeah. for for you for like you know trusting in me to collaborate and it's just so nice to be able to like share that you know creative juice and yeah and make oh beautiful but I'm it's essentially going to help people to experience a more pleasant period or at least you know have some more ease i just yeah i love the way that you communicate um this idea of yeah of the moon menu and and celebrating a period and nourishing yourself and nourishing you know our, our bodies through through nutrition you're just mm -hmm. so so gifted at it and um i'm so grateful that we've got all of your witchy nutritious <laughs> treats on the menu, yeah. For anyone who pre-orders, who pre-orders the book this year, gets to receive all of that really lovely moon menu magic. So thanks so much for contributing. I really appreciate it. So welcome. <laughs> so for people who uh, would love to know where to find you, what, um, <laughs> where, where should they go? A, a to buy the book and also just mm -hmm. to queue out and have a store. So any book sh um, stores, any booksellers should have the book. If they don't, then you can definitely ask them to order it in. And I think that's always a good place to go to start in to support local bookstores. Mm -hmm. However, if online's easier, I understand that. And so if you head to clairebaker.com, C-L-A-I-R-E-B-A-K-E-R, -E -E um, slash book, then I have links there for you, you know, wherever you are in the world to be able to order the book. And as you, you know, when you're over there hanging out on my website, you can learn more about um, like free classes I have on charting and taking a course with me. I also love hanging out on Instagram and on Insta, I am at underscore, again, Claire Baker underscore. And I'd love to hear where you are in your cycle today, how you're feeling, come and check in with me over there and um yeah and connect with other people who are also charting their cycles and on this exciting period journey <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much claire really really oh. had a great time chatting with you as always <laughs> yay thank you love <laughs> yeah oh wasn't that just the best chat ever guys <laughs> i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did and if you did make sure to press like on the video and subscribe to my channel for more goodness I post videos every Sunday. Press the bell so that you don't miss next week's video. In next week's video, I'm going to be chatting to you about all of my favourite cookbooks and what I love about them. I will see you there and I hope you have a nice week, guys. If you enjoyed this video that I recorded with Claire, I encourage you to go and check out my video on how to meal prep for your period, as well as my video called Cycle Syncing 101. So this one has got basic explanation of phases of the menstrual cycle, in case you're wondering, as well as tools that I use to help with consistency, um, in creating morning routine and in planning our all of the things that we want to do in our life as well as the things that we have to do in our life. 